Question. What are three words that will strike fear into the heart of every PAX administrator? If you said PAX is down, you're 100% right. I hate reading these words. I hate talking about this. It's every PAX administrator's nightmare, but you need to know, so I'm going to endure it for you. Disaster recovery. Disaster recovery, as the name suggests, is all about the PAC system getting restored after a disaster. The disaster could be nature-made, fires, tornadoes, earthquakes, floods. Disaster can also be human-induced through a virus, data corruption, or just good old human error. Either way, what was a perfectly functioning PAC system is now a worthless pile of computer parts, and it's up to you to rebuild the system after a catastrophic failure. That's disaster recovery. Business continuity is different than disaster recovery. Business continuity means if one part of the PAC system fails, can the system continue working? For example, let's say you have two database servers, node A and node B, and node A is the primary, node B is the backup. If node A goes down, the system can be configured to automatically switch to node B and keep working, while at the same time alerting the PAX admin that node A is not functioning. To the average PAX user, there would be no noticeable difference. The PAX system would be functioning normally. In other words, business continues as normal. Of course, it's going to send the PAX admin scurrying quickly to the data center to figure out why node A is down, because now there's no backup node. Hot or cold. Backup servers come in two varieties, hot or cold. A hot spare stays powered on and connected to the network. It's ready to go at any moment. You can just flip over to it, or it can automatically flip over to it, like I talked about with the node A and node B example a moment ago. A cold spare is either turned off, not connected to the network, or both. It will need to be powered up and connected when needed. In general, a hot spare is more commonly used for a business continuity solution, while a cold spare is more commonly used in a disaster recovery role. Database server. PAX systems have a database server. The database server is the brains of PAX. It knows the location of every image in the system. It doesn't store images, that's what the archive does. But it knows where in the archive the images are stored. It keeps track of every patient record in the system. It manages the storage of all the information and images in the system. If the database server is not working, the whole system is down. It is the brains of the operation. You must back up the database server. Because the PAC system relies on the database server, you have to back up the information on the database server. This can be an automatic process or a manual process. In the manual process, the PAC's admin makes the backup by copying the data to a storage location. In an automatic process, the system makes a copy of the data to a storage location on a set schedule. For example, the backup process might run every night at 2 a.m. And depending on the system or not, this may cause a downtime. The database may have to be down so no new images can come in while it's being copied. Now, if you don't run the backup or the backup fails and the database becomes corrupt, what happens? Let me give you a real world example of what happens. St. Anthony Hospital in Pelton, Oregon announced it lost more than 5,000 archived x ray images from 900 patients due to the failure of an information technology system at their facility. GE informed the facility that the images were not retrievable due to a computer disk failure. Okay, now that sentence is important. It tells us that they suffered a database failure. They didn't lose the images. The images are still stored in their system, but they can't go find them. Right? They don't know what part of the archive. They don't know where these images are in their system. They've become unfindable. Right? So the patient's written x-ray reports are available, but the actual images are lost. Doctors made the discovery when they tried to access assess x-rays earlier in the year. Okay, so they didn't actually lose the images. They lost the ability to find the images. It's a subtle difference, but a huge one. So to, to go back to this question, if you don't run the backup, the backup fails, the database becomes corrupt. You lose access to all your data. Your data will still be there, but you won't be able to find it. When you type in Mr. Smith, it's not going to find Mr. Smith's images. It doesn't know where they are. Full or incremental. There are two types of backups. 
full and incremental. A full database backup is a backup copy of all the data in the database from day one until the time the backup process runs. And because this can span years of data, it usually takes a long time to run. An incremental backup is a copy of all the data that's been stored since the last backup was run. Because this is a smaller block of data, it generally runs much faster. So a backup schedule might be something like Sunday, 2 a.m., full backup, the whole database. Monday through Saturday at 2 a.m., run a 24-hour incremental backup. Once a week, a full backup is done at 2 a.m. Every other day, an incremental backup is done to capture new data stored in the last 24 hours. And this is a nice balance of the short incremental backup while once a week having the safety net of a full backup. How many images are there? As I said, images are stored in the archive. And to prevent image loss, most PAC systems store multiple instances of the images. Typically, there are three instances of a particular image. One is stored in the archive, a second instance is stored in a business continuity location nearby, and the third is stored off-site in a disaster recovery location. So let me talk about that for a second. If you stored your current image plus your business continuity location plus your disaster recovery all in the same database, and that building is destroyed by a volcano, you lost all three copies. You now don't have those images anymore. So when I say the third is stored off-site, let me give you an example in Hawaii. The main archive and the business continuity archive are on two different locations in the city of Honolulu for Kaiser Permanente. The third copy, the disaster recovery, is stored on the island of Maui. If the entire island of Oahu sinks to the bottom of the ocean, Whoever's left can swim over to Maui, get the database full backup from Maui, and bring the server and the whole system back up. So that third copy that's stored in disaster recovery should be stored miles, counties, even states away, so that whatever natural disaster destroys your archive in your business continuity solution, you still have that disaster recovery far, far away. So again, we're talking about three copies of every image. So let's do a little math for fun. A single chest, one image. How many is it stored? Three, obviously. Two view chest, how many images stored? Six. 150 slice CT, well that's a 450 stored images because you're storing three copies in three different locations. And by the way, this is a general example. Some sites store more, some less, but on average, average most places store three instances of the image. So here's a few downtime tips and tricks. You might want to save this one slide for when you're working in the real world. Depending on what cause of downtime is, you may have some options to keep the workflow going. Here are some tips and tricks. Images can always be viewed at the modality, even if PAX isn't working. Any images done that day that are still on the modality can be viewed there. If the network is up, studies can be sent to the test PAX environment. Every PAX has a test and a production, so you can use the test PAX as a lifeboat. If you have a working film printer, studies can be printed. I don't know of any place that still has a working film printer. Studies can be burned onto CD and DVD at the modality, so if you know you're going to have a long downtime, you can always just burn CDs of studies and build your archive that way. And studies can always be sent to Nighthawk. Nighthawk is a remote reading service. For example, when it's midnight here, it's noon in Australia. A lot of places will send their studies to Australia while their radiologists are home in bed sleeping to be read overnight. So that's an example of a Nighthawk service. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon in class.